All right, guys, it's the big demo day. I am so hot. I actually don't have anything on but a bra on the door because it's just so incredibly hot in the suit. But This room where I'm doing the demo is all tarped off. Um, I've got plastic on the floor. I've got um, the air conditioning off. For the most part, I just want to make sure that I'm totally safe during demo. I don't want to spread any of this anywhere else. So I'm going to do the demo and then I'm going to clean up really well. And I'll see you on the other side and I'll probably have lost 10 pounds from sweating. So yeah, anyway, wish me luck. I'll see you on the other side. You may be wondering why all the protective clothing and barriers for this demolition job. Well, during the first week of owning the home, I took a variety of samples to our local lab. I knew the house was built in 1957 and therefore it could have lead paint. The samples I took came back positive for lead paint on the exterior siding, but I knew there was a possibility there may be lead paint inside the house as well. In addition, I found some mold on the subfloor and on walls between the kitchen and the bathroom. If you look closely, you can actually see the black mold on the back of the drywall where I'm working. I'm following all the precautions detailed in the North Carolina's Lead-Based Paint Hazard Management Program for Renovation, Repair, and Painting Contractors. Boy, that's a mouthful. As a licensed contractor and certified lead paint contractor, I can complete this demolition myself while following the protocol for lead paint abatement. However, I highly recommend hiring a professional who is certified in lead or mold abatement. These hazards are not for the average DIYer or homeowner. The consequences of making a mistake are too high and can impact the health of you or your family. Ultimately, I had to remove all the drywall between the kitchen and the bathroom and the tile around the tub, and I am so glad I did because I uncovered multiple sources of rodent access between the crawl space and the attic. I can only speculate that there was a possum or a raccoon getting access because of the size of the poop in the attic. Gross. Hey guys, it's been a crazy two weeks of demolition, a very hot and sweaty demolition. As you saw, I had to wear a plastic suit and a respirator every day. It was just, <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad to be done and I can't wait to show you guys the demolition reveal, I guess you would call it. A lot has happened here and the view has really changed. So let's go ahead and uh, give you guys a little tour. The front living room area hasn't changed much, but when coming into the house, the view is much more open and now you can see all the way into the back of the kitchen. The room on the right was the old laundry room that was only accessible from the outside of the house. It will be much more welcoming to go into this room via a doorway from inside the house. Plus I have plans to add a toilet and vanity to this room and reconfigure the plumbing and electrical for a stackable washer and dryer. You may notice a few holes in the floor. This is where there were plumbing leaks and consequently a fair amount of rotten wood and mold. I actually discovered some termite damage to the two band joists in the laundry room. I've called my framing contractor in to repair them and also to replace the rotted floor joists under the laundry room. But in the meantime, I'll be moving up the task of getting a termite treatment and contract in place on this house, so stay tuned for more on this. If you look up at the top of the wall between the kitchen and the bathroom, you'll see it's open on the top. This is a partition wall. In other words, it's not load bearing, but unfortunately without a top plate, it allowed animals to get into the holes around that big black plumbing stack. Before we close up the wall, I'll need to add blocking to the top to deter animals and to slow a fire if one should occur in the house. In the bathroom, you'll notice the huge hole where the toilet was. I'm not kidding when I tell you the only thing keeping the toilet from falling through the floor was the heavy duty cast iron waste pipe and a few tiles. The subfloor was so rotted it crumbled in my fingers. Insane. In the hallway is the location for the new electrical sub panel. All the wiring in the house was ungrounded and the current sub panel is situated next to where that new powder room is going. Therefore, to meet code, my electrician and I decided to move the sub panel to a less conspicuous spot, but unfortunately the framing was turned sideways, so I had to reframe the wall to allow for the depth of the panel box. That concludes the post demo tour. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel to keep up with the Millie's Remodel Project. See you soon! Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to click that like button below if you liked it. And hey, don't forget to click that subscribe button up there, and you'll never miss another DIY video tutorial from Pretty Handy Girl again. Speaking of not missing anything, I'm on all these social channels. Come find me at Pretty Handy Girl.